San Francisco is world famous for its iconic Golden Gate Bridge. But is it really worth visiting? Most travel guides say it's a must-see, but on my brutally honest tier list of the top 50 attractions in San Francisco, it gets a disappointing D grade. Visiting the bridge sucks, and I'll tell you why in a moment. In this video, I also cover the best, the worst, and the hidden gems that don't show up on any list. All from someone who's lived here for years. Because some landmarks, attractions, and neighborhoods are amazing. Others are a trap, and not worth your time and money. First, what's wrong with the Golden Gate Bridge, and where should you go instead? The Golden Gate Bridge is crowded. There are a lot of people there. Pedestrians, bikes, cars, and more. It's hard to get there. If you drive, parking can be a challenge. It's also very cold. If you go in the summer, chances are it'll be covered in fog. If you go in the winter, it might be raining. And visiting the bridge itself doesn't give you very good views of the bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge is iconic, and it is cool but you'll get better views of the bridge at some of the other places on this list. Instead, you should go to the S tier of all S tiers, Golden Gate Park. Golden Gate Park is bigger than Central Park. What makes this park so special is just the breadth of things that exist there. There are museums, lakes, gardens, and so much more. You could spend an entire day in Golden Gate Park, and I have many times over. And if you visit San Francisco, this is one place that you do not want to miss. If you've never heard of a tier list before, it's just like the grades you got in school, but with the addition of an S tier. S stands for super. These are the things you do not want to miss. And there are a bunch on this list that you've probably never heard of. Up next is another iconic San Francisco landmark, and you might be surprised what I have to say about it. Alcatraz Island. Again, Alcatraz Island is cool, but there is a right way and a wrong way to visit Alcatraz. First, the night tour is much more interesting. It is the same tour, but done at night gives it a whole different feeling. The key to visiting Alcatraz is getting off the ferry early. The tour will be crowded, but do your best to get to the front of the line, which isn't that hard, and you'll have the place mostly to yourself. The tour is a self-guided audio tour, so go at whatever pace feels comfortable to you. I lived in San Francisco for years before I finally visited Alcatraz with some other tourists. It is a cool experience. You can only do it in San Francisco, but there are other ways to have fun here too. So Alcatraz gets a B. Time for a rapid fire round. Here are the rules. I've picked five things in a common category and I've got to rank them D through S. No two things can have the same score. My first rapid fire category is neighborhoods. The contenders in alphabetical order are the Haight-Ashbury, the Mission, North Beach, Ocean Beach, and Union Square. Last place is an easy call. Union Square might be the least interesting neighborhood in San Francisco. Yes, there is a cable car stop there, and we will talk about that later. Aside from that, there is no good reason to visit Union Square. With a grade of C is the Mission. I love the Mission. I used to live there. But it has gone downhill since the pandemic. There are still some great places if you know where to look. Valencia, Bernal Cutlery, Dandelion Chocolate are all still amazing but it doesn't rank as highly as something like Ocean Beach. Visiting Ocean Beach might not be like some other beaches you've been to. It's big, yes, but it has a tendency to be cold. What makes Ocean Beach special are some of the features that other beaches don't really have. For example, the bonfire pits and its proximity to Golden Gate Park. For that, Ocean Beach gets a B. Up next with an A score is North Beach. North Beach is often considered San Francisco's Little Italy. It's lined with restaurants like these and has some of my other favorite places in San Francisco. There will be some other places in North Beach on this list later on. And in the top spot with an S tier grade is the Hate Ashbury. Everything you've heard about the Hate is true. The epicenter of the the 70s hippie movement was here. Today it still has some of that flavor. It also has a great restaurant scene and some of the coolest stores in San Francisco. My rating for this next one might surprise you as well. San Francisco Center. This is a mall right downtown. A few months ago I spent an entire day here and I saw a ton of tourists while I was there. And if you're a tourist thinking about visiting this place, my suggestion to you is don't. There is a big rotunda, which is pretty cool, 
But aside from that, there's no real reason to visit this mall. San Francisco Center gets a D. Up next is Fisherman's Wharf. This place is built almost exclusively for tourists, and it is a great place to visit with your family. The iconic Boudin sourdough bread is here, and it is okay. It's also got Pier 39, which we'll talk about a little bit later. There are a couple hidden gems like the birthplace of Irish coffee, but overall Fisherman's Wharf gets a B. A little bit higher if you're visiting with children, a little bit lower if you're not. Up next is the ferry building, and like its name implies, this is where you can catch a ferry. It also has some of the best restaurants in the city, and some of the best views in the bay. The ferry building is absolutely worth a visit. On Saturdays, you can check out the farmer's market, any other day you can get dinner or a quick bite to eat. And for that, the ferry building gets an A. Up next is one of my favorite San Francisco hidden gems, a ferry ride. While you're at the ferry building, don't forget to take a ferry ride. For just a few dollars, you can hop a ferry and get some of the best views in the entire Bay Area. Even if you don't need to take a ferry, the ride is well worth it. But you might as well check out some of the places that the ferry takes you as well. Which ones are the best? We'll talk about that later. Telegraph Hill is another famous San Francisco icon. These are the Filbert steps, but I've always been partial to the Greenwich steps. If you visit, keep an eye out for the parrots. Not surprisingly, the higher you go, the better the views get. Telegraph Hill might not show up on every tourist list, but for me, it still earns a B. If you make it all the way to the top of Telegraph Hill, you'll find Coit Tower. The tower is a memorial to the firefighters who bravely fought the fire that resulted from the San Francisco earthquake. I didn't have time to make it to the top today, but if you visit, the walk up is worth your time. I think a B is a fair rating for this attraction. Time for another rapid fire round, and this one I'm calling only for Instagram. If you like posting on Instagram, these places are for you. If not, I'd probably avoid them. Our contenders are the Cable Car Turnaround, Cupid Span, Fort Point, Lombard Street, and the Palace of Fine Arts. In last place is the cable car turnaround. It's not in a great neighborhood and it's not that impressive. If you wanna know what it looks like, here you go. We'll talk about the cable car ride itself shortly, but the turnaround gets a D. Next is Cupid Span. It is cool, but it's just a big piece of art. Great for Instagram, not great for much else. With a grade of B, we have Lombard Street. This iconic windy street isn't even the windiest in San Francisco. It is crowded with other tourists, and there aren't a ton of other great places right around this area. With a grade of A is the Palace of Fine Arts. I have seen a lot of cool Instagram pictures taken at this location, and if that is your goal, you should visit. It is in a beautiful neighborhood, and it has a concert hall inside, which is a great place to visit. The Palace of Fine Arts gets an A, which leaves our S-tier location. Fort Point. This might be the coolest view of Golden Gate Bridge. It's also a historical site. A bit difficult to get to, but probably worth your time, especially if you want to post it on Instagram. Up next are the classic cable cars. If I was rating each line individually, they'd all get different scores. The one to take is the Powell Hyde line, starting in Fisherman's Wharf. The ride up the hill gives you some of the best views anywhere around. And where else can you ride a cable car? For that, the cable cars get an A. Ghirardelli Square is another iconic San Francisco landmark. If you visit, definitely get some chocolate. This neighborhood is right near Fisherman's Wharf, and it has some incredible restaurants. Still, it is extremely touristy. The key thing to know is that you should stay here instead of Union Square. Ghirardelli Square is deserving of a B. Stop by Christmas Tree Point and Twin Peaks for some of the best views anywhere in San Francisco. You can see everything from the Golden Gate Bridge to Oakland from up here. It's a good place for a quick hike, or if you're more intense, a hill sprint, but there's not much else going on at Twin Peaks. Still, because of the view, it deserves an A. The painted ladies were probably already on your list, but you might want to take them off. They're just houses. Yes, the full house houses are an iconic view of San Francisco, but this is one that probably belongs in the only for Instagram category. The way to do this park right is to go to the mill around the corner. They have some of the best sourdough bread in San Francisco. Get a coffee as well from Four Barrel, also inside the mill, and head over to the park. And here's another pro tip for you. Bathrooms can be really difficult to find in San Francisco but any of the public parks will have them. I think we're due for an S tier, so let's head over to Oracle Park. 
the home of the San Francisco Giants. If the Giants are in town, I'd recommend you catch a game. They might not be good anymore, but the experience at the ballpark is worth it. Right on the bay, it's another iconic San Francisco experience. Still, this ballpark and the neighborhood around it are an easy S tier. Salesforce Park is a completely different kind of park. It's located a few stories in the sky on top of the Salesforce Transit Center. And while it is a unique, interesting place to visit, it's often crowded with tech workers, and there's not a whole lot else up there. If you're lucky, you might be able to grab a drink or see a show, but there's a restaurant that's been coming for years, still not open. There are so many other great parks in San Francisco. Salesforce Park may be unique, but to me, it's a C. Let's do another lightning round. This time, museums. Our contenders once again in alphabetical order are the California Academy of Sciences, the Cable Car Museum, the de Young Museum, the Exploratorium, and San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. In last place, the Cable Car Museum. I've been, it is cool, but it's just a museum about cable cars. If that interests you, check it out. But I don't think it quite compares to some of the other museums on this list. For example, the de Young Museum. This is a fine art museum, and if that's your thing, you'll love this one. But here's my tip for the de Young Museum. You don't have to pay to get up that tower. And this is where you'll get some of the best views in the park. If you're in this area, the free ride up the elevator and the views from the observation deck are totally worth it. The museum, not my favorite. Next with a rank of B is the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. It doesn't quite compare to some of the other international modern art museums. That said, I've never heard a single person visit and say they didn't enjoy it. It's right next to Yerba Buena Gardens, which is a pretty cool neighborhood, so you could do worse than visiting the MoMA. With a rank of A is the California Academy of Sciences, right across the street from the de Young Museum. I'm a sucker for a good science museum, so I will admit I am biased here. But take a look at the other ratings and you will see nobody dislikes this museum. That leaves, with the S tier ranking, the Exploratorium. Chances are you've already heard of the Exploratorium. This is an interactive science museum, and sadly I must admit that I have never been. But even the exhibits that surround the museum are really cool. For that, the Exploratorium is a clear S. Yankees legend Joe DiMaggio grew up in the North Beach neighborhood, and legend has it that in his will, he specified that his funeral would be catered by this next location. Molinari is one of the best delis that I have ever been to. And to this day, if I am anywhere near it, I am sure to pay them a visit. I like the Italian combo with everything on it on Dutch Crunch, another classic San Francisco bread that you might not know about. Giving Molinari anything less than an S would be absolutely criminal. This one is an easy call. One of the quirkier items on this list is the wave organ. And it's exactly what it sounds like, an organ that's played by the incoming and outgoing tides. It's weird, it's worth the walk, there are some great views. Still, maybe not one of my favorite places in San Francisco, but it still gets a B. Chances are you've seen a lot of parks in San Francisco. Golden Gate, Salesforce, Alta Plaza, there are a ton of them. While Golden Gate might be the most famous and Salesforce might be the most unique, the most interesting is Dolores Park. On a Saturday or Sunday in the summer, this is not a very family-friendly place, but it's one of those that no trip to San Francisco is complete without. Dolores Park, S tier. The Embarcadero is the name for the paved path that runs all the way along the waterfront. There is no better way to visit than taking an early morning run. If that's not your thing, there are plenty of bars and restaurants, from Oracle Park to well past the Ferry Building. Chances are you will visit the Embarcadero while visiting something else. For that, it gets an A. For one of the most iconic views of the Golden Gate Bridge, head over to Baker Beach. And if you make it to Baker Beach, just remember, naked people that way, clothing required that way. One of the things that makes San Francisco so special and unique are the diverse set of neighborhoods that exist through this relatively small city. Because of that, it's time for another rapid fire round. And again, we're doing neighborhoods. Our contenders are the Castro, Chinatown, City Hall, Japantown, and the Presidio. In last place is City Hall. Yes, it's a tourist destination because there are some cool looking buildings. Aside from that, there's absolutely no reason for you to go here. City Hall is an obvious D. A not so obvious C is Japantown. Personally, I love it. And if you love Japanese food, you will too. But some people might criticize it for being a little outdated. And it doesn't quite compare to the B spot, the Castro. The Castro is known as San Francisco's LGBTQ neighborhood. 
It's got some great restaurants, theaters, and parks. Personally, I don't think a visit to San Francisco would be complete without a visit to the Castro. Up next is the Presidio. The Presidio is another neighborhood with a diverse array of places to visit, things to see, and stuff to do. That leaves our S tier, Chinatown. Now this might be a bit controversial, but I love Chinatown. So many of the other neighborhoods in San Francisco can feel a bit similar. Chinatown, on the other hand, is totally different. It is a completely unique experience. Up next is Pier 39 in Fisherman's Wharf. This is an obvious tourist trap. That doesn't mean it's not worth your time, and that's especially true if you're visiting with children. The Mirror Maze is a legitimately cool experience. Some of the restaurants have closed down, but this is still a great place to see the sea lions and entertain your kids. Pier 39 gets a B. Maybe a little higher if you've got small children, probably a little lower if you don't. Up next is the brand new Chase Center home of the Golden State Warriors. Now the Warriors might not be good anymore, or maybe never again, but the stadium is incredible. If basketball's not your thing, they do have quite a concert schedule there as well. Even walking around the outside of the stadium is a fun time. If you wanna make the most of the Chase Center, you do have to see a game or a show. To me, the house that Steph built is an A. Between the Presidio and Golden Gate Park, right on the end of San Francisco, you will find Land's End. Land's End is fine. It's got the Sutro Baths, some ruins of an old bathhouse, a golf course, a pretty cool camera thing. To me, it's not a must visit compared to some of these other places, especially if you've got limited time. Land's End is a B. Still excited about that ferry ride, but not sure where to go? Try Angel Island. It's a state park and a perfect place to have a summer picnic. I made an entire video about camping there overnight. It has my hands down personal favorite view of the Bay Area. It's a great place to take a hike and it's also got a rich, if controversial history. It might not be for everyone, but for me, it's an A. And that brings us to our last rapid fire round. Nearby places outside of San Francisco. Thinking about doing a day trip? Here are a few options. Berkeley, near woods, Oakland, Sausalito, and wine country. In last place, we've got Berkeley. There's nothing wrong with Berkeley, and personally, I love it. But for you, there's probably no reason to go. With a C rating is Oakland. Now, this one hurts. To me, I don't think I could recommend it in good faith above the others. But it does still have the A's for now, and some cool places like Jack London Square, another great place to take the ferry. If you want to see some really big trees, the B ranking goes to Mere Woods. Mere Woods is cool, and the trees are really big, but it gets crowded. You have to make a reservation. Don't get me wrong, I've been a couple times, and it's cool. But it's probably not as cool as our A spot. Salsalito. This is another one that you already know all about, and a great place to take the ferry. It's perfect on a sunny day for breakfast or drinks out on the water. You really can't go wrong with any of the restaurants in Salsalito. And with the S tier ranking, wine country. Truth be told, this one isn't even close. The Napa, Sonoma, and other regions in Northern California are iconic. People travel from all over the world just to go here. And if you like wine, there aren't many better places for you to visit. One of the pro tips is that Napa is certainly more renowned, but that also makes it more expensive. Sonoma, the town and county right next door, has some incredible wineries as well, and many of them are a little bit less expensive. San Francisco is one of only two places in the world where you can ride a driverless taxi. You get in, it takes you where you wanna go, and there is nobody else in the car with you. It is exactly as neat as it sounds. And in my opinion, it's something that you have to do if you visit San Francisco. Waymo rides, get an S. If you like this video and wanna know more about San Francisco and things to do here, I've got you covered in all of these videos. If you disagree with any of my ranking, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're nice, I might even respond. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.